way to do that. And it was never these take one or two or three. It was like, okay, if we stumble, that's part of being human, right? And people do like to see the flaws as well. So, I mean, how, why did I get into it? Because I always enjoyed it. I always enjoyed being in the video. Um, I always like having conversations. I like just entertaining. I like um, bringing value. I like solving problems. I like to have um, create a community um, so that people can feel like they have a place where they won't be judged, right? And I like to have opportunity, provide opportunities for others. So that's why I got into it. I do not like to be in videos. <laughs> I do not like public speaking. Um, but I got into it for one simple reason. 97% uh, of my business has historically been referral, right? <laughs> past clients, friends, past clients, friends, that kind of group, like a lot of us. But I was finding that by the time people gave out my name, they already had a connection with somebody they met on Facebook. And when I was able to actually then dig down and talk to these people, what I found is many instances, they'd never actually spoken to that agent yet. But they were going to use Mike Braddock because they know him, they like him, they trust him. Mm -hmm. So I realized that my business was not going to be sustainable if I didn't start broadening my sphere of influence and having a point of view on things and connection and um I am not the skilled videographer that these people are. I've never done a podcast, um, but I am getting great responses and I don't hate it anymore. And some of the times you mentioned being vulnerable, the more vulnerable you are, when I talked about falling through a ceiling, <laughs> my numbers went way up. When I talked about why is a stupid lady in the attic in the first place, my numbers went way up. When I talk about my positive focus or motivational Monday and stuff that has nothing to do with real estate, my numbers go up and I don't have a following like most of us probably are looking for, but I get stopped in the grocery store by people that I tangentially know and say things like, you're killing it in real estate. I love your videos. I watch them. Now, they might be the fourth person that watched them. Everybody sure. doesn't watch them. But the fact of the matter is these are people that remember that I'm in real estate that I haven't talked to in 12 years, shame on me, work clients, and are stopping me talking about real estate. So if you're not someone that thinks you want to do them, open your mind, because maybe you do. I hate video. <laughs> <laughs> I hate public speaking. I hate all that. So my business was built on Facebook. And what I noticed with a pattern on Facebook is that my views started going on. So when I started recording videos, and again, I hate videos, um, it was just out of necessity to be completely honest. To stay relevant, to stay in front of my clients, and to stay in front of my sphere. I do the podcast style, but I don't do an episode. I book a day and at the studio and I'll have bullet points of things that I want to say and I'll record 30 to 90 second videos and then that'll be my content for minutes. Um, I do that and sometimes in the car I'll do a spontaneous video. So a few weeks ago I, I think I booked three times with me and I got this calendar year, three deals closed from a video. That nice. someone saw a video, called me, but some two of those people knew of me, never, sure. never met me, heard my name, but the video kind of brought that in and created a connection. So the video, um, I use Facebook like my sphere of influence. So when I do these videos, it's kind of like touching my sphere of influence mm -hmm. and hoping to expand it past, you know, the people that I do know. So I'm one of those people who does not like to be in front of the camera, but I also recognize the numbers that that is the cheapest way for me to get mm -hmm. it. It is the cheapest way that I'm able to touch my sphere. Um, I'm super uncomfortable. I'm not going to pretend like I'm Erica or John who like love and you can see it. I I stutter. I do all that. Nate, I'm probably driving crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My first ever video, it was with him. 
um, walking through the city. So, like, I've been working with Nate for a long time, and he already knows. And I'm like, Nate, be prepared. It's going to be a long day. So I'm not comfortable in front of the camera, but I just see the value in it. So I force myself to do it. That's to be completely transparent. And there's a likability factor. There's a likability factor, even if you're like tripping over your words, which I do in every single right. one. Nobody goes, you know, they don't stop and go, oh my God, we tripped over three words in that. Right. Nobody cares. Right. They're like, she was trying to get her point across and she's a little ADHD. And, you know, and they know you, they just have so to And I've bumped into people at restaurants and supermarkets. I'm very big at like going to a local restaurant, doing a video and, and telling them how much I like this place and telling other people to come. And I've gotten business from business owners by doing that. I've, I'll bump into somebody somewhere and they were like, girl, I tried that place you recommended. I love it. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what, we, what are you talking about? I, I'll forget about it. And it can be. And, and the thing about these videos, recently I noticed I, the first deal that I got was from a video that I did last year. Yeah. The video barely had any hits. I don't know what triggered the algorithm to pop this video up in front of these people, but the video had very low hits, and it was from last year. And suddenly, it just people were engaging with the video. I don't understand the way the algorithm works, but not necessarily. Like, you want to have videos out there. So that you can create like a history. So if somebody Googles me, some of my videos might come up. Recently I started posting on TikTok because my 12-year-old told me that I should be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll put it on Reels, I'll put it in Instagram, I'll put it on Facebook, and then I'll put it on Facebook on TikTok. Now you can't share this. You can't go on TikTok and then share it on Facebook because your views will not be the same. So you gotta upload it individually. Because they like original content, but I'm here to tell you guys I'm probably the least comfortable person on social media, but I force myself because I can get this. They're getting uncomfortable to get comfortable, right? It's not like yeah. as you do it over time. Hopefully, that's the goal. I haven't gotten it yet. It's getting better. It's just like that. Yeah. America, are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's You're good. Are you creating your video on one single platform and then moving it to these? individual so i'm creating the video individually not inside tiktok not inside facebook but like on your camera on my camera and or on Nate's camera and then <laughs> i publish it in those different places gotcha. yep. yep there is a simple way to make that easy because it can become a lot for somebody to have a video it's got to go to facebook instagram twitter x uh tiktok all these places there are softwares out there we use one called metrical where you take that one video, you upload it into Metricool, and then you connect all your accounts to this one software. You can select where you want it to go, schedule it out, and then as soon as whatever time you scheduled it for, say 5 p.m. tonight, at 5 p.m. tonight, that one video is going to go individually to all those individual places. That's cool. So that if you want to schedule your content out like a month in advance, that's the best way to do it. Because nobody wants to be sitting at home every night at 5 p.m. typing up a post for six different platforms. Yeah. So it, I think it's like 30 bucks a month, but it's well worth it. It's cheaper than Hootsuite, which I did right on the board. Um, they both do about the same thing. I think Hootsuite has like a couple extra features, but for the <clears throat> few extra features and the savings, I think Metropole can do what everybody in this room probably needs to at a high level. And most people that are killing it, they don't even know their face. Mm -hmm. they do yeah. and when they so you don't actually need your face. You can do voiceovers. If you're not comfortable showing your face, yeah. and yet your face is your brand. So sorry, use your face. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna like get started, oh, maybe right. voice yeah. over. Yeah, and then work your way up. Yeah, I like it. We're Teddy. What would you yeah. say? Um, and we can start back with John. You know what's working right now really well. Um, so originally I started, I asked a few agents from different areas if they wanted to do a podcast and like nobody really bit on that. So when we did hire Zach, I did ask him if he wanted to start the podcast and we originally had a plan to do a podcast about real estate. That was the original idea. But ultimately like I love selling real estate. I love my career, but I don't want to talk about it all the time personally. Mm -hmm. So, and I can tell you from videos in this room and I can point to two different people that do really good videos that aren't about real estate. So Taryn does tons of videos about uh, being healthy. 
inspiring, I'm guessing, I don't know your stats on this, but I'm guessing inspiring to tons of women and getting tons of leads from that, I'm guessing, um, and cut tons of connections. Because what she's doing is talking about life and what she's doing for herself to take care of herself. People want to hear about this. It's inspiring to them. And then originally when Adam Osborne was trying to get started with videos, he would ask me some questions. Some of the questions were like, oh, I got to do this, this, and this. And, and like the ladies on the panel said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Adam and I had that discussion originally. This does not have to be perfect. You can stutter. You can do anything. It's okay if you're not looking at the camera. Just make a video. And I remember he made one. My favorite video he did, he pulled into his driveway and talked about how he spends a couple minutes in the driveway before going into the Magnus of Home and Kids <laughs> and how important that couple minutes is. And I guarantee there's people that watch that video that literally that day pulled into their driveway and well, Taylor did it, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Sat there and I was like, yeah, I can do it, John. I can do it. Good <laughs> times in three hours. <laughs> Yes. But I'm guessing that that happened. That's what people want to see. So ultimately, we started as a real estate podcast. Episode two, we brought in a movie director. Episode three was about my sobriety. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to give back when I do my stories to plant seeds. Help one person at a time, no matter what you're doing. And whether it's about real estate or it's about something in the world. So like M28 is a, we found out what that was on one of my podcasts. That's some furniture, used furniture that helps people, families, single women, people out of rehab, get furniture for their house. Mm -hmm. I would have never known that if it wasn't for our podcast, which we're changing the name to a show because we film everything. It's not necessarily a podcast. It's a show. When you're on that couch and you're doing your stuff, I'm sorry, it's not a podcast. It's, you're on a show. Mm -hmm. You are a show. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So, um, and like for me, I love the camera. And then like for her, the camera loves her. See the difference? You know that one? <laughs> so, but that's the thing, like, Make sure your videos are doing something for somebody else. And if it's putting somebody else first, planting the seed for somebody, us sharing stories of adoption, sharing stories of my buddy that went to a Mexican prison, which is my favorite episode we've ever done. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know who that guy is in the room. But we've shared stories of hope, inspiration, everything. And that's what's built my business up. And I've been looked at, this is my 19th year full-time, and I went from being a, always having good numbers to exploding over the last literally six months because the people I wasn't getting before on social media are out, all now coming to me. It's literally put me on a level that I probably don't necessarily in my heart feel like I don't belong on when it comes to a professional level because you guys know how professional I am. <laughs> um, but it really has worked for me to do this. And that's why I did it. And it's been huge. Mm -hmm. One so. thing I'll add to that that I love that you do at the beginning of the <clears throat> podcast is you you kind of just tie in there like, hey, this isn't a real estate podcast, but my real estate business is what funds, it. funds this podcast. So if you love this podcast, you know somebody looking to buy or sell real estate, send them my way. My information will be posted below. And so, I think you would make, hey, this is John Hare from Keller Rooms at Central PA, also with The Good Hustle. Like, there's no reason not to say it, even if I'm talking about working out or whatever. Like, I'm always going to mention that because it better be the first thing they hear. Because when they're done listening to the video, I want to be here, not back here with the next time they think about real estate. Okay, 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 so um, what's working? So um, so the whole, the, the premise of the, the podcast that I have is called Keeping It Real. It was talking about real estate and real issues. We actually revamped it, and I'm the sole host now because um, we can always use educational content for our team. So the premise of the, the podcast is to have real conversations with extraordinary people in multi-million dollar homes. The reason why I chose that, that platform and the purpose of the multi-million dollar homes because I always wanted to have business in multi-million dollar homes with clients that have the, the ability to purchase multi-million dollar homes and also have relationship with those builders. Yep. So as a result of that, we've only been doing it for about five to six, six weeks. Um, and uh, I'm actually getting builders calling after the second episode saying, hey, we would love for you to host your next podcast. 
in our model home. Yeah. Oh, so you know, yeah. Yeah. you know that we're looking to move to the Central PA area, and we would like for you to be able to host us and get our name out there. So I'm like, yes, I'm so excited about that. So they have two that are coming up, one in August and one in um, October. And then I had one with an agent. Can I tell you that I love our agents? There's a lot of people that do love to collaborate and they understand that their business can grow as well. That I called this gentleman, he's like, I would love for you to do it. And because um, for whatever reason, normally when we have it under frame and it's sold and it's not selling, I don't know what's going on. So I walked in the house, Nate shows up, he calls first to hair because there's no furniture. I said, what, in a million dollar home, there's no furniture? Like that's like crazy. Everyone else that's building that has new construction tools, we know they have furniture in their house. So after the, um, the show, he came, he said he wanted to meet me. And I said, hey, can I ask you something? He's like, yeah, sure. I was like, why do you not have furniture in this million dollar house? Especially in Hershey, right? Why do you not have it? He's like, I've been trying to get them to do it. I said, well, show them the YouTube videos that we have and all the other properties that we actually have a tour and they'll see if they're trying to compete with everyone else, they have furniture in their house. If they need to have furniture. He's like, okay, we'll do that. So he said, we're friends now. And oh, by the way, they're in the process, the builder that he's working with, they're in the process of building the most expensive house in Central PA. He said, would you love to host a podcast there? I said, yeah. <laughs> I'll be able to advertise that. And I actually met with another um, builder rep that I had a, a episode with. And um, she said she loves the work that we're doing and she wants to see how we can actually work. So, and I have a listing appointment yesterday with someone that's looking to move up to a multi million dollar home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, about having real comments. Uh, well, it was a slogan I used million dollar conversations and million dollar homes. We're not talking about real estate. It's all about self-worth. Um, sometimes we have business conversations. Um, sometimes we talk about relationships. Sometimes we talk, I mean, there's so many different things that we talk about that has nothing to do with real estate. We just happen to be a million dollar home and we let the builders, we shout out the builders, the location, and we do a little property tour that we put along out there. Can, can I say something along the lines of what Erica's talking about though? Your, your show isn't the only thing that you do. No. You also have coffee with beans. Oh, I do do coffee with beans. You do. You yeah. have a whole nother system in place. Yeah, and let's not forget about Simon, which I oh, know Simon. number one for the Simon video. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. So coffee with beans. Oh, go ahead. And I was going to say um, one thing. You don't have to do it as big as Erica. <laughs> but no, to get traction. I don't. I did one video that made it. Um, this is what 1.1 million will buy you in Hummelstown. That's true. And I got 7,000 hits. That's the only video out of wow. all of this, all of the videos that I've done. I, and that's just on TikTok. I got several, that, and it was just like, and I just did like, let me show you what 1.1 million will bring you yeah. in, in Hershey or no, it was Hummelstown. And they did his typical video. I didn't see anything else. I just did the intro. And I got a bunch of hits. So my point is, you can do that with your, just your regular showing, like yeah. just to get engagement. Just get permission. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. right. But perception is reality. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Erica, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but you and I were talking about like breaking into that luxury. Market. It's hard. It's hard. You can have a video in a million dollar home and people are just going to assume that that's what Absolutely. you do all the time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're now a luxury agent because perception is their reality. So that's how you can break into that space. Um, there was a gal at, I think it was a mega camp that we went to and she would take selfies in front of the big house on the street when she was showing the little guy on the street. <laughs> and that was how she increased her price point. Because perception is reality. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a million. It can be a 500 right. or a seven. Whatever yeah. your number is that you want to be, what's your sweet spot? Mm -hmm. That's true. Doesn't because we had another builder, um, they reached out to me and said, hey, does it have to be a million? <laughs> 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 you know, you take an acre of feet. Imagine saying now, seven, 20. Back to the what's working. Have you gotten, how many leads have you received in that price point? Ooh, so 
pipeline. So I had my first appointment, which is a buyer and a um, a seller appointment. Um, and then I had a conversation that I'm having. So I'm going to say the first solid one that I have, we didn't have this one. <clears throat> yeah, but you're yeah, talking to people. people. But yeah. you, and you haven't been doing these many no. conversations very long. So no. that's pretty good. Yeah. A lot of the time, yeah, I don't want to pad my we staff. take, <laughs> we take, it takes a little while. So that's actually amazing yeah. because it's only been a few weeks and you think like since yeah. you first started. So that's an ROI. That, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the eyes that you don't know. Because that's the thing about it. Like the leads that I've gotten, um, this I've been thinking about calling you for months. I saw your video last year, right. video last year. So you're probably gonna get a lead from video one, like yeah. several months from now. So that's yeah, the video stays there forever. Right, it does. Shannon, how about you? So I'm gonna bring you down to Erd because <laughs> I don't have this level of success or experience, but I I am still a big advocate of this, and here's why. Three months ago, tomorrow, I fell through an attic. For nine weeks, I sat on a couch. I was not allowed to do anything, no walking of any kind. What could I do? That's right, I could do videos. From the couch, <laughs> I mean, I looked like crap, but you know what? And it wasn't all about that. As a matter of fact, it took me a while to actually tell people I fell through an attic because I was super embarrassed for obvious reasons. But here's what I learned. People watch your stuff. And if you post, like I was posting at least every other day, which I've never done in the history of ever because mm -hmm. I had work to do, but now I didn't really have a lot of work to do. Um, people started calling me and checking in. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing all your videos. How are you doing? Well, actually, you know, and you've been having these conversations and I've gotten investors, clients of mine that were, you know, normal clients that now want to invest in real estate because we just started talking about what's going on in the real estate market and how to pay for your kids' college education without you know, just relying on that 529, which, by the way, is not going to be enough money. Just putting it out there. Oh, I know. And for another day. Yeah, class for another day. But it was, it's so, again, just simple little videos on my iPhone, on my couch, <laughs> got people calling me to check in because they hadn't talked to me. Shame on me. Um, so, and it and it's leading the business and just people following. So again, if you if you need to start small like me, I, I would aspire to be them. But I'm me and this is my little box right now, and it's kind of working for me. So I'm gonna roll with it and then maybe get to the next level. So you can start small. It's okay. Right. Are you guys doing most of your videos on your phones or what kind of equipment are you using? So half and half, half on my phone and half that makes the and this one is you set up and you now use your phone, or if you have a camera and you want to bring it in, you can, but it's set up to plug and play directly with your phone. That is super cool, and I highly recommend because it's, it's going to make your little iPhone video like next level. Does it work and, for Androids? And yeah, it does. Nope. <laughs> He's got to bring it for a hat. You want to do a tech <laughs> video for Wednesday while he's here before he has to leave? A couple of you can absolutely do that. We had John Henry do one, Ed Sinkovich. Yeah, yeah. If anybody wants to stay after this, I'll show you how to set it up. It takes about 30 seconds and very, very simple. Not a lot of know how. Yeah. And we heard a listing from Spring Hill, and the lady said that um, one of the reasons why we, we have this. Um, <clears throat> We send out an email every month to a community that we market for farming. But she says she actually looked us up to see if we were on social media because that was important to her. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why she called us. Yeah, and you have like a digital footprint. Yeah. Good point. And the homes that I sell that are more expensive, they always check me out like this. Yeah. So what's always. your best? Facebook? That's what Facebook. Instagram? What's your best? Find your audience. Yeah. yeah. A lot of mine are Facebook because they're Facebook older. And that's your audience. Yeah. yeah. A lot of mine are Facebook because they're older. My younger people yeah. go into Insta, but my older million dollar or $800,000 people are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's where they look for. Like, who is your ideal client and where are they going to be? Yeah. 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 And I like what you said about that. Um, you know, back to family reunion and Lori Vaden had said, like, the higher the level of trust needed, the more important your personal brand. Mm -hmm. They're not looking up KW when you go on these listing appointments. They're looking up what you are doing. Now, if you're new, you can absolutely crutch on some of those KW stats. But the more you're on social media, they're going to think that you've sold a ton of homes. If you're just cranking out videos giving value, they're, they're going to think that you're experienced. Remember, perception is reality. 
but you putting out content regularly, your listeners, especially your listeners, are looking to determine if they trust you to list their biggest asset. Yeah, and I think Montez McRae is the biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, I mean, zero deals, and he's on social media every single day. And the next thing you know, he's a family reunion on the stage. On stage. With Gary Keller one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. 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 Selling multi-million dollars. Under 30 yes. years old. <laughs> yeah. And wrote a book. But if that's not your if that's not your aspiration today to go to, oh, I want to sell a million dollar home. Maybe I want to sell four hundred thousand or six hundred thousand or whatever. That's okay too. Find the niche and do as much as you can on that niche. What's a six hundred thousand dollar home look like in Mechanicsburg? Or and also anytime that you can, if you have a listing that represents your target, get all the social media presence on that that you possibly can. You can get them to do a video or whatever, get all the social media because again, that stuff lives forever. So even if you do your one $700,000 listing, people are going to see it and that's going to get a lot of play. So that will help you get features. And you have content in the conversations that you have with your clients. For example, you know what, um, Erica, I just don't understand how I'm going to be able to pack up all of my stuff. You know, I lived here for 20 years. Yeah. And then you're telling me I want to pack up my stuff and then just to leave. That's one of the reasons why I don't want to move. That is a video as to why they should. Because there's somebody else just like that person you just had a conversation with. So anytime I'm in a consultation, I'm literally taking mental notes as to what my next video is going to be or what my next educational tip is going to be. Because everything, every conversation you have is content. And oh, by the way, we work with seniors and we help them. We have we have resources to help you sift through all these things. And, you know, so that. This is the problem. Here's how we solve it. And say it in the same demeanor. Say it in the same demeanor as they said it to you. Yeah. If, that, if that's your ideal client and they said it in a way that you want to work with another person like that, say it in the same, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I'm going to have to move because it's going to resonate with the person that you want to work with next. I yeah. promise you that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any uh, fail forwards to share? Mary, she wants to don't be like me and record 75 videos to say one sentence. But I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I wish I was lying. That's actually embarrassing. Me is like, let's go. And um, the best content that I've had, I'll, I'll stumble. But yeah. before, I wouldn't post it. Now mm -hmm. I post it. Just put it out there. Um, another a tip that I have, um, I don't know if you guys get like your listing pictures with me, but those um, reels that he creates, I think, what are they, like $75 or something? 55 as an add-on. 55 as an add-on. So those reels, so I have a listing on Green Street, and I just did like a one-second intro. This is what, welcome to 1743 Green Street, and I put it out there. I've been using that a lot, but now I have a listing around the corner on Hamilton Street because she saw the video. Sure. Mm -hmm. She saw the video. She said, we were friends on Facebook, but she, they connected the two and she saw that video and she called me. She said, hey, I just saw that you put that house on the market. I'm getting my house ready. Can you come and give me some advice? So that like video, I highly recommend just, and this was hard for me to do, just like get in the front, introduce yourself, open the door, something super simple like that is content that could possibly bring you another listing. And as we all know, with all the changes, we all always want the listings, right? So that that add-on for $55 is going to make me $6,000 for the house that I'm going to sell around the around the corner. Would so, you take 55 yeah. bucks for $6,000? Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to Nate for that video because... uh. Oh, actually, I think that was Ben. It was Ben's video. That was oh, Green Street, right? Yeah, 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 yeah Green Street. But yeah, so um, yeah, right. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. But um, either way, I, I'm, I, you do, you should use them, use them for pictures because it's what they get sure the best. I so second, over you, I second that. Right. Thanks. But that fifty-five dollars is like the best fifty-five dollars I've spent. And now I stand up for me. I do a all my yeah. okay. I have a fail forward. Don't forget your current bread and butter clients. If you're trying to raise your your um, cost of a listing, great. But don't forget to still PR to the people that are actually keeping you eating today. Yeah. Because I had a lady. I've literally 
bought and sold four houses with her. And she wanted to sell her dad's house. Or no, buy a house for her dad. I did sell her dad's house. But she wanted to buy a house for her dad. And it was a $230,000 rancher. And she didn't think that I would sell those houses. <laughs> Shame on me. And she's like a, a personal friend and a client that I've sold four houses for now five. But she didn't think that I would sell that house because she never saw anything on it. And we didn't talk about those. She was always asking about the big ones. So don't forget the bread and butter because I would love to sell a hundred of those $230,000 houses, but I didn't tell them that. And then just use Chris Quintana's listing concierge and take some of them out of your plate. Right. The <laughs> I get comments a lot of say, they say you're too busy. I see how busy you are. So, Ooh, well, yeah. really? right. too busy. so you've got to make sure that people understand you're not too busy and there's nothing you won't do. There's nothing you won't buy, I've nothing heard, you won't sell. I've heard, oh, I didn't want to bother you for my son you were busy. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby with this $230,000 house, I was like, you know, that's what I do. She doesn't want to do it, but we sell the higher end homes. No, we sell anything. <laughs> Shame on me. Um, Pam Forwards. Oh, um, I can tell you, I bought no, camera. I'm kidding sure. you. Sorry. You're <laughs> distracting me. I'm serious. I did it's not hard distract you. Yes, it is. <laughs> I bought camera equipment to film everything that I do probably in 2015 but I'm just getting started like legitimately just getting started I have containers full of nice cameras and microphones and <laughs> everything you can think of and uh that's a fail for how much of that stuff are you using huh none of it they don't sell it okay. yeah, I am gonna sell it I have some I have some buyers lined up but the bottom line is, I wasn't ready, apparently. I mean, it's everything, and that's when it was supposed to happen for me. But, and I don't live with regrets, but I can tell you my business would probably be a lot bigger right now if I had started this in 2016. So the bottom line is, get off your butt and do it, because the timing's never better than right now, just like we say in all real estate transactions. It's a bad time to sell. It's never a bad time to sell. It's never a bad time to buy. Like, never a bad time to do a video. Yep, never a bad time to do a video. Oh, I, Damaris and I had a conversation about that. We were like, well, first, I got to order this fancy mm -hmm. microphone. Mm -hmm. And then that comes in, and they're like, well, I can't do so it I, yet because I need to fly. How, how much was your microphone? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Amazon. Don't. Yeah. Just how do you, start. How do you continue to come up with new content? Are you posting things from your life? Are all you of just it. So yeah. good? It's all, it's all of it. Good. Like today, like I, I have a coaching call in a second, but like we went back there. I wasn't planning on making a video today, but can I share the one with like that I'm yeah. working So this is simple. No. I'm down here today in our new podcast room in our office in Enola. Does your brokerage have a podcast room? <laughs> the advertising the brokerage. Videos, photo shoots, anything you can think of that you need done for media, they can do for you in your business. And in today's world, we all know media and social media, i.e., are always going to be first and output in your business. Today's world wants to see stuff on video, whether the camera loves you like Erica Rawls, or the camera. <laughs> Like just make videos. Nice. Yes. That'll yes. probably do pretty well. So you know how you have a, a journal, right? So you should probably have start because I do it. I mean, it's funny. I could probably be really embarrassed if I showed you my phone. I have video diary that I'll record myself. Because it may be a oh. piece of content that I can use down the road. Mm -hmm. I love Smart. that. Yeah. A note like B-roll? Like put it in a separate folder? Not even, just... Well, yeah, B-roll is the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I literally have a video content of me. I mean, it could be in the car if something happens or right after an appointment or whatever. Be with my family, be with friend, wherever I am on vacation. If I if something comes, I was like, well, that's real good. I'll just start talking. Now, my husband, I drive him nuts. So I don't do it as much around him. He's like, can you just be off for a moment? <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, <laughs> so sometimes I'll try to bring him into it too. My family even they'll get upset with me because we'll be doing something. I'll be like, you know, whatever. He's like, oh gosh, help me. Like, yeah, he's shaking his head back there. So it's true. But at the same time, I do turn it off. But if I know that there's some really good content that I could use you know, maybe polish it later, or I don't want to forget it, or something just off the cuff, and I think it's going to be good and resonate, I'm recording it, and I may post it in stories, or I may, I, I leverage my social media now with um, Shannon Claire, who's amazing, I'll send it in a, a video folder for her, say, hey, use this, and no crazy, crazy stuff out of the stupidest stuff I say. Shoot ready aim. Yeah. Do not, do not wordsmith it, do not do but not. Do not. Do not film it 15 times. I My my max is four, and I try to make it three. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the time, I would use the first clip that I did. I it, And I might, I might still video it three times, but then I'm like, these didn't get any better. I'm just going to yeah. use this one. <laughs> Nobody has ever said, you know, you really sounded freaking stupid. <laughs> no, but they keep thinking, but they've never said it. Yeah. And chances are good they're not thinking about it that much. They just see your face and go, oh, that's her again. So that yeah. And I think people want to, they, you know, back to your question, Dalton, people want to know that you are a real estate expert. Like, right. that's great. And yet, what's Bytalk post? Oh, food. Food. What's he famous? I mean, Bytalk is famous for posting his food every night. It's like, what's Bytalk out of There's so many things that should be, should be done. Yeah. But like, so, Dalton, don't make it personal. Amen. Make it about what you're, something you're oh. passionate about. Right. Sort of find your, your niche, too. Yeah, kids take your best purpose video. and passion. Can I, what can you say about my best like, video, hundred thousand views. All the kids, kids, and I made it about them fighting over in the inventory of real estate, and they were fighting. So fun. Over hundred thousand views. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my fail forward was just imposter syndrome. Like Thanks. I always had the feeling that nobody, I couldn't, I wasn't ready to speak on that subject yet until. I kind of was reminded by someone I work with. They were like, well, I kind of got into investment properties because of you telling me about them. And I've watched thousands of hours of Grant Cardone and all the other big, you know, Pace Morby, things like that. But I can't relate to that. But I can relate to someone who's not in that position who can also speak on it. That's what I just said. Dalton, an example. You're getting ready to have a settlement. I just got off the phone with a client and told them that their settlement is scheduled and we're ready to go. And it made me think, not everybody gets to settlement. If you're looking, you know, there are things that happen between contract and close, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? It's just something stupid like that. Whatever comes into your brain, how can you do a 15 second little, it made me realize not everybody knows this. So blank, if you want to learn more, give me a call. And people actually, or, you know, or DM me or something, people will. Yeah. Will. And the stupidest thing can be content. Mm -hmm. That unique code is chat GBT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Today, somebody posted on their Facebook wall. They want to talk to a real estate agent. I got three people that posted on this person. I don't know his wall. Two of the people that posted my name, no idea who they are. I was like, I don't, I'm looking through photos. I'm like, I don't know who that person is. And I guarantee it's because of video content. Sure. Mm -hmm. Guarantee. Because I'll go to places and they'll be like, Hey, what's up, podcast? Like, that's the stuff people say to me. That's it. I want to add to back to your question. It doesn't always have to be new. You can reuse content. Oh, yeah. Either A, you feel like you can do that video better because you're more experienced, or you have a new perception, or you can literally repost the same video that you created two years ago. And I want Ben to share a success story about that. Okay. He's coming up. She texted me. She said, talk about this. It's legit. It's All right. Legit. So there's kind of two things here. Yes, you can repost videos anytime you want. Even if you even if it went out last week, you can reuse that video because the algorithm works in really strange ways. Not everybody that saw it the first time is going to see it the second time. So if you're struggling to come up with content, there's nothing wrong with just posting the same video. It's going to go out to some of the same and some new people. Uh, an example of this. I've been in a, a rock and roll band for like 12 years. We did a cover of a Christmas song, You're a Meme One, Mr. Grinch. A lot of people don't know this, but we posted it in 2017, I think. Yes. And zero reaction. 
we didn't, I mean, it got like a thousand views on YouTube, which was really low. Like we, we were like, all right, you know, this didn't, this, we did, we thought it was good, but apparently nobody liked it. Fast forward a year later, we did the exact same thing, posted it again, and it got 36 million in less than a week. The algorithm just does weird things. So my advice to anyone is yes, repost, A, B, do not let a lack of reaction discourage you. Your content is not bad. It's it's not you, it's the algorithm, and it's just persistence. You know, you, you cold call all the time, you're gonna get rejected. Every now and then somebody, you know, lists with you or becomes a buyer. You just keep going. So content will pay off because if you guys say say, say you make 50 videos and you get one client out of those videos, each video takes roughly what? two, three minutes to make if you're making vertical videos. How many minutes is that for a client that you just spent? So like times. when you look at, you know, the dollar per hour that you can make just creating content, it's astronomical compared to my musician business. You know, I get, you know, a quarter of a penny per every thousand streams on Spotify. You guys get one client and you're making thousands of dollars. So like, look at it that way. It's not a lot of effort to just be yourself on camera as soon as you get past, you know, overthinking things and caring too much, caring too much about your content is a barrier to entry. Don't let it stop you. Repost things. Don't get discouraged and just make videos because people need to see your face. Hello. Well, cool. I have coaching. So, and she's actually inspired me to do videos. So. Hey, Henry. Yeah. Okay. Anything that we shouldn't talk about that we didn't talk about? Whenever you're as new agents, there's new agents in here, right? Yeah. Um, when you're helping other agents use as a, as a reason to make video, like I helped Shannon get a bird out of a house. He did. I took a video and it, and it went viral. Yeah. And I was already there helping her. I just shot a video. It's the way this. You, you were on vacation. No, I got there. Okay. I got there. But in, but I wasn't there at the time. I was like in Harrisburg or something, and there was a bird flying around. We were afraid it was going to damage the house, and I called by Tom. <laughs> I think it was with Kelly, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I said something about a bird in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest, well, and that house was right. under contract that same weekend, and he's like, you know, bird in hand, but unfortunately, you missed the opportunity. Yeah, this one flew. Right. This one flew off the market or whatever. <laughs> and, but again, well, no, it right. wasn't planned. It was just right. yeah. But that's the best thing. Right yeah, yeah. yeah. spontaneous and have fun. Because I think we're more relaxed when we do that kind of stuff. Oh, and I learned. Like I struggle with that. Don't take videos as you're driving. I got a lot of hate comments mm -hmm. from doing that. It's very unsafe. Mm -hmm. I got some of those. <laughs> Brady was the first comment. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a the, the real broker, the, the CEO does them all the time. He puts his phone in his cup holder and then just drives and looks at the road, but they're so relatable. That's the only time I have free. Yeah. There's a lot of people on TikTok that they just have their phone up while they're driving and they put out a lot of my so team knows I drive and go straight to the end of time. So I don't want to be a turkey when I start on TikTok. Oh, I'm, yeah, I just like it so much. I'm comfortable with my car. Well, they do what make you comfortable. Yeah. The blooper reels that Nate and I have done have gotten more video, more views than some of the professional videos we've done somewhere else. Yeah, it's entertaining. People. Yeah. People want to be, they go on social media to be entertained. Yeah. Or informed. Or informed. But you what, what was a uh, so for video content? What was Rory's thing? Educational, entertainment, or what was the third one? Ooh, I don't remember that one. That one didn't resonate with me apparently. <laughs> but it was the, his big thing was what are the questions that your clients are asking? So if you are focused on for the safety of like this room, if you're focused on families. That's where you can talk about, oh, there's a carnival happening this Saturday, and you can do a video about the carnival. Like, what is your ideal client thinking about? And it's not always real estate, but they're, you know, as a mom, I'm always thinking, what free things can I do with my kids this weekend to keep them occupied? Um, so just think about, you know, Jake and you and I were talking that you've got a lot of clients from the gym. So you can talk about that. Like, what do they need? Kim, your passion is animals. 
that you can speak to your passion to help rescue animals. That is going to get a lot of people. They have a lot of people who will. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, so you can, his big, Rory Vane's big thing is your purpose is your passion, and that's what you should be creating content about. Yeah. Let your passion fuel your real estate business. It doesn't have to be real estate fueling your passion. It can be the other way around, but it gives you a sense of purpose. We need to bring a kitchen in here now so I can cook. Your food yeah. posts are the only food posts I look at. Like, well, I do. I know. I like, like, food 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 like, like whatever. I'm like, is it Jason? Yeah. Okay. He always has a nice delay. Why? And when I, I'm like, I crap everywhere. I'm like, oh, yeah. we're not yeah. professional chefs, so we're okay, just gonna put it out. OCD, I don't like shit. Yeah. So real quick, <laughs> um, I did take some notes for everybody on the board. Feel free to take pictures. Um, so just recapping, some of us love video, some hated video. We did it to create community. It's getting us referrals. It's allowing us to build relationships with those watching the video. And you will build confidence over time. Be vulnerable. Video helps you with face recognition. Um, it allows you to stay relevant. A tip was to shoot videos in bulk and then have a full person. It is the cheapest source of leads. Business previews is an easy way to do video. Uh, a reminder to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. I also tell people get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, Cause that's, that's how you grow. Voiceovers to get started. It doesn't have to be about real estate. Be authentically yourself. Have a goal of helping just one person at a time. You can always change directions. So something that I gathered, John Henry's podcast started to be about real estate and then he pivoted and he said he knew about more helpful inspiration. That's how you pivoted. Um, it's okay to change directions. Perception is reality. So when people see a view on video, they're going to think that you're an expert in. Content is in the con in the conversations you're already having. Don't record too many times. Just post it. Keep it simple with reels. Don't forget to PR to people who are already feeding you. Make sure you remind them you're not too busy. Their biggest regret was they wish they started sooner. Have a video diary for content ideas for later. Overcome your imposter syndrome. I have book ideas for that. And don't let fear be a barrier to entry. There are 10 511s out there. If you want to narrow down what's the one thing you're going to do in the next 24 hours to help you get started with implementing video in your lead generation strategy. Um, if there's not any other questions, the rest of you who weren't able to tour the content room, Ben is here to do that for you next. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.